once again very good morning so prior starting uh, let's recall what we have uh, discussed yesterday there are kind of five different languages and concepts of sql so could you please name what all these languages are and what all commands each language has i mean it has to be in the way of execution what comes first what comes second and what comes third so on mm. anyone who were present for yesterday's session what all languages we have discussed what queries are present for each of this language uh, hi atish good morning this is neha hey, good morning uh, so uh, we discussed about uh, ddl dml mm. uh, dcl dql okay. and dcl okay and in case of ddl what commands we can use there uh, we can use create alter and uh, drop okay data definition uh, language then we have hmm uh, dml that is data modification language uh, here uh, we will use insert update and uh, delete kind of uh, okay very good say. then uh, it is dcl that is data control language Mm -hmm. uh where we have two option uh, two uh, types of uh, queries that we can do that is uh, grant uh, privileges to the user or revo revoke okay uh, then we have a uh, dql that is data query language uh, it is used for searching uh, data in the table uh, like select okay and uh, i think we can use use also okay then we have finally tcl that is transaction control language uh, where we use uh, queries like uh, commit rollback and uh, transit okay cool now there is only one change uh, in your explanation everything is correctly explained in case of dml it is dot uh data modification it's a data manipulation language that's the only change uh, all the statements remain same there isn't any uh, uh, the terms of queries you have explained it correct so only changes in terms of long form or what it is called as it is not called as modification it is called as yeah, manipulation yeah. yeah okay okay thank you hmm now uh, yesterday i might have explained you about truncate see it behaves like ddl and it is a ddl it is not a dml i was expecting some answers or i was expecting some questions from your end that uh, truncate is a part of ddl might be you people have gone back and seen where the truncate is used truncate is purely a data definition language sometimes it behaves like dml sometimes it behaves like ddl but it is a combination of both and it is only part of data definition language truncate is a part of data definition language not a data manipulation language delete is only but data manipulation language now let's head over to the mysql which where we are discussing the queries see do not get confused about this truncate i might have said it's a ddl i might have said it's a dml it is a combination of both but it is always a part of data definition language it is always a part of data definition language it's a data definition language there isn't any change there hmm. now yesterday we have also seen the importance of where now in terms of sql as i've said it's an english language in terms of sql there are few more concepts uh, few more concepts like clauses operators now we would be discussing clauses and operators uh, when and then uh, we are using it on our in our queries so there are different clauses one of the clause which we discussed is where clause uh, there is one more clause called as and clause now what do you mean by and clause see if i am using delete i am using where somewhere i am using where somewhere i am using where clause in update also so if i go back and see see first thing whenever you are logging into the specific sql uh, the notebook the ide my sql ide workbench you have to always use a specific database now in case of using a database also there is a possibility you can write this way um, select our keyword should be in capital 
select this specific database. See, while selecting, let's see if this runs or not. This has to be semicolon. Now the thing is, it is unable to guess what we are trying to select. Select database. This is also keyword. See, either you can do this way. We have selected specific database. Now it is always not recommended to select a database. You can directly jump and use that data. Selecting means you're trying to select something. You're trying to select that specific database. But if you want to use that, you have to use this use command. So use is the best approach. Even this is DQR, data query language. Selecting a database is also a DQR data query language. Why? Because select is a DQL command. So you can go with select, but it is always recommended. The best approach is go with use database. And whenever you open MySQL Workbench, this is the first thing which you have to keep it in mind. If you directly run a query, it will not work properly. Now let's create a new table here. Now while creating a table structure also always keep it in mind. Whenever you are using uh, opening and closing the braces, the parenthesis always end with a specific semicolon. Now while writing the column names, what all columns we can have, um, I've created a table called as India States. So we can use a state name. See, if you want a space between any specific um, the column name, while writing SQL queries, always keep it in mind, there shouldn't be any space between the column name. If you want a space, I mean, this is the right one. There shouldn't be any space. But if you want an additional space, there is no option to mention a space here. There is an option to mention underscore. You want a gap between two words, you can always go with the underscore. State name, capital, um, language, now let's see uh, what we can declare, um, probably ID, let's get this ID at the first state. Now, ID is a numerical entity. So the data type, whenever you declare a column, at the end, once all the columns are declared, make sure you are declaring a data type for it. So ID, it can be a numerical value. So in case of numeric, it is integer here. Now, in data types also, there are multiple data types for every, uh, I mean, in case of numeric, there is an integer. Apart from integer, there are other data types as well. Now, in case of string value, string is nothing but your character, combination of character as well as variable. So if you want a variable character or including all the values, we always go with var char. Now, there is an option to declare char also. Even you can declare character value. Even this is possible. Now, in case of SQL, there is a slight difference between var char and char. You can declare char. Character is nothing but, I mean, char is nothing but your character value, which is a string value itself. Now, why do we declare this variable character more as compared to character? Now, in this SQL, there are a few benefits. What kind of data type you're using, depending on that, it will also help us to improve our query efficiency. Uh, in query efficiency as well as storage efficiency. Why? Because while writing any specific query, now if I have written vari variable character, state name maximum, it can take around, uh, what is the maximum size? I mean, what is the state, uh, the name of the state, which goes up to certain limit, around 20 characters, maximum of 20 characters. So if you are declaring 50 here, if you are declaring 50 here, and if you are declaring 50 here, maximum of 50 characters it can take. Now here also it can take maximum of 50 characters. Now, what is the difference between var char and char is? This is char and this is var char. And we're giving a certain size of the data. Size. Assume that 50 is the maximum size or not go with 50. Let's take with uh, 8. Maximum size is 8 here. And here also maximum size is 8. Now in this maximum size, assume that I am 
writing this string value. This is a string value. KSR is a string value. So I want to mention this name. And then what does the character data type do? We have eight spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now same goes with variable character. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I am declaring this KSR value in this specific column. K S R here also K S R. See, in case of character as a data type, there are five more spaces left. In I mean, in case of variable character also, there are five more spaces. But if you declare it as variable character, that means the value of a character is varying. What do you mean by variable character? It's a kind of varying the value. So whenever you declare a variable character, even though you declare a maximum size of eight, but the value which you have entered is only occupying three spaces, it will always neglect these spaces. These spaces would be automatically neglected. Why? Because it's a variable character. In case of only character, whenever you declare a certain size, even though your value is less or equal to number of eight characters, it will still take these white spaces. These white spaces are still present. This will not be eliminated. These are still present in the character data type. So increasing the white space means increasing the storage and reducing the efficiency of any specific SQL statement. Why? Because more space, less efficiency. The reason why people always go with variable character is it will always neglect the white spaces. Whatever value you are declaring, assume that maximum size you have declared eight, but the characters are going beyond eight, nine. It will throw an error. Why? Because one of the characters is going beyond the limit. It will always throw an error. Similarly, in case of character also, maximum size we have declared eight, but if there are nine characters, Similarly, here also, it will throw an error. But if the number of characters are less than whatever data type you have declared, whatever data size you have declared, the character will always occupy the white spaces. It will never neglect that white space. So it is a storage problem as well as it's an efficiency problem. Even you can declare character here. Character will work properly. But if I'm declaring 50 character with a 50 data type size, it will occupy 50 different spaces, which is simply waste of storage. So one advantage of using character and variable character is always go with variable character. The value is varying here. Depending on the size of the data, it always vary and it will always remove the white space. Any question on this? Now, this is for this was for only in case of numeric. Also, there are multiple data types. We'll discuss one after the other. Language is also varchar. Now, in case of numeric uh, data type, it is not recommended to mention any size of the data. Now, why is it not recommended? Maybe I'll explain it, but let's first create a table. The table is created and see if you see the indentation of a table. I mean, whatever I'm writing a query, it should be in a very precise manner. Even though there is a much of white space here, I have still taken the data type towards rightmost where the all the data types are declared from that specific uh, point. So while creating any table, make sure in mind your indentation also matters. Because if you are coming back and reading this query, uh, it is very difficult for the individual who is reading this query. So make sure all the indentations are correctly done. Now, once this is done, insert into this specific table. Now, this is DML. This is DDL, this is DML values. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to insert certain values. See, while inserting also, there are four different columns here. Now, let me insert few values. For ID, it is integer. There is no requirement of semicolon. For state name, semi, I mean, inverted commas are required. Why? Because it's a string value. Now we are good with this. Let me close. Now, if I insert this, for four different columns, I have declared four different values. Now, if there is a slight change, even though there are four different columns which I have declared in the structure of a table, I do not want to mention all four different values. I only want to mention few set of values. Now, let's take a second example. Now, this is what uh, 
the values are and I'll skip the ID here. See, if I am skipping certain column value, this insert statement will always throw an error because column count doesn't match. If you want to insert any specific value into that table, it has to match the exact number of columns which is declared in that table. Now, I do not want that ID to be inserted. I don't want that ID to be inserted. Now, in that case, if you want to declare only three values, it is always recommended insert into India states what columns you want to insert. You can I mean, mention that columns. I want to insert state name directly. So let me mention state name, comma. I want to insert capital. You can declare capital here. And I want to insert language. You can declare language here. Only these three values I want to insert. Now this will work properly. Why? Because we have declared the exact number of columns which I want to insert in that specific table. Earlier it was not correctly done. Why? Default, it will take all the four columns which we have declared. But if I mention the column names, this would be automatically inserted. Now, this is one use case. Now, one more use case is, let's change the, interchange the position of statements. I mean, interchange the position of uh, whatever insert, I mean, uh, the queries we are trying to insert, whatever values we are trying to insert. Uh, what I'll do, I'll remove this state name. I'll take capital and I'll mention state name at the last. Now, similarly, see, I've interchanged the positions. Let's try to insert this. Even this will work. Now, use a select statement to see what all values are there. So let's start from the specific table. See, even though I have interchanged the positions, the values are correctly inserted. Now, it is up to the individual or maybe up to us, how do we insert that values? But the order of values should be correctly mentioned. If at all, I'm not mentioning any column names, it will insert in the right approach. I mean, it will insert in the same manner where the columns are declared. It will start with ID, it will start with statement, it will start with capital, it will start with language. But if you're mentioning the number of columns and in the order which you have mentioned, and if you're inserting that specific values in the order, in that same order, it will be inserted the same way where you have declared the column names. Now, here you can see, let me insert few more values. Insert into India states. Now, what I'll do, I'll insert all the values. Now, while inserting, in case of state, I'll insert a black. And in case of capital, let me mention some state name. Now, I'm not inserting state, I'm only inserting. Now, if you see here, see, I'm trying to insert a blank value. I'm not inserting the state name, I'm directly inserting a blank value. Now, this is inserted. Let's see. See, if you can see, there is a slight difference. In case of IDs, it is reflecting it as null. And in case of state, it is not even reflecting null. It's a pure blank. Now, what do you mean by blank and what do you mean by null? See, this is an interview question. Uh, in most of the interviews, this is asked. And with respect to SQL, as an individual or as a, as a data analyst, we should also know what is the difference between null and blank. See, here I haven't mentioned anything. Only three columns I have mentioned. So there can be a possibility in future, I might come back and I might insert few IDs here. That is the reason it is reflecting it as null. But in case this is this fourth insert statement, I have clearly mentioned no value to be inserted. That means it's a pure blank. Now, what is the difference between null and blank is null versus blanks. See, in case of null, every null is a unique. Every null is a unique. That means if you are mentioning null, if there are are 10 nulls, every null is a unique. In case of blank, all blanks are same or blanks are same. There is no uniqueness here. Blank means I haven't mentioned any value or it is purely blank. I have, I've clearly uh, stated that there is no value for this. In case of null, in future, there might be some value. In future, there might be some value. There might be some value. That is why it is called as null. In future, there might be some value 
which can be inserted in place of null. In case of blank, there won't be any, no, I mean, no value can be inserted. If it is blank, no value can be inserted. Now, let me explain with a small example. See, I cannot uh, give it a blank space here. That is the reason I'm mentioning blank here, the blank keyword. Now, I want to find the number of unique values in both the conditions. Now, in this explanation, I would be covering null, blank, as well as unique. Even unique condition would be covered here. In case of SQL, null, blanks, and uniques plays an important role, and somewhat they are dependent on each other. Now, in case of first condition, I want to find number of unique values. Now, in case of unique values, one, only one value is present. Two, it is unique. Null, okay, unique. Three, only one value is present, unique. Unique means only one occurrence. Again, null. As I've said, every null is a unique. So in case of this null, in future, you might come with some six value. In case of another null, which I'm mentioning here, in case of this null, you might come up with a certain value, which is eight. This can be a possibility. So every null is a unique. If at all nulls are repeated, you should always consider that null as a unique value. So even this null is unique, even this null is unique. In case of four, there are two different fours. Uniquely, it should be one. So only one four, and at last we are selecting only one five. So these many unique values are present in the first condition. Now, if I go with second condition, I want to find number of unique values. Here, one is unique, two is unique. There is one blank, there is three. One more blank is present. That means every blank is a unique value. Every blank is a unique value. No value can be inserted. All blanks are same. As I've said, all blanks are same. So blank can be repeated only once. You, it, you cannot repeat it. You cannot change it in future. So if one blank is coming, if there are 10 blanks, you should always only go with one blank. Why? Because one blank is, I mean, all the blanks are unique. So one blank will consider that all blanks together. So blank is already done. You cannot mention blank again. You can always go with four. Four is also repeated. So only one unique value and end with five. So these are the unique values in the second condition. This is the basic difference between unique and null. Uh, sorry, null and blank. We might have considered unique also, but this is the basic difference between null and blank. Every null is a unique value. And null doesn't, I mean, uh, it, it is not trying to convey that it is blank. Blank means you have kept it blank and you cannot insert anything again. Whereas in case of null, there is a possibility that in future you might come up and you might insert few values. Null means something is pending. Something is pending. In future, it might be updated. So every null is a unique value. Always keep it in mind. In case of blank, even though there are 100 blanks, always go with only one blank Why? because all 100 blanks are no value. You cannot insert any value in the blanks. Mm -hmm. Now, any question on this null versus blank condition? Okay. Uh, hi, are... Hey, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in case of blank, we cannot insert new values, but uh, will update work on that? Update is possible. Update is possible. But in case, see, if you are mentioning it as blank here, if you are mentioning it as blank, um, see, null can be a changed entity. Here itself, it is reflecting null means something is pending here. We are yet to, I mean, we are yet to announce it. We are yet to declare it. Blank means we have, a, we have clearly declared that there is no value. Update is there accepted. But in case of blank, that means it is nothing is mentioned here. So we assume that's the SQL statement or that's the SQL way of approach. In case of blank, that means we have clearly declared that there is no value, that there is no state for this fourth, fourth statement, that there is no state. We have clearly declared it. We can still update it. Update is a possible condition. But in case of update, also you have to write all the where clauses and and clause here. If you want to update, update. How do I write the update state? Mention directly update set. Now what do you want to set? I want to set state name where capital equal to either you can use this way. You can use one more operator called as and because I want to match both the conditions. You can use and condition here and language equal to. See, the question here is why language is uh, giving it in a blue color. Language is a keyword in SQL. There are few words which are already present as a keyword in SQL. That is the reason it is highlighted in blue. 
So do not get confused. Now language is equal to this condition. Spelling is uh, different in table creation of language. Uh, where yes, we might have declared it wrong. Here itself. Now the condition is let's first see spelling here is different. Let me mention that spelling. Ideally, this should be the right spelling. Now, see, it has updated. If I again use a select statement, it is updated. Now, in case of null, see, even though you can update it, but in, in case of SQL, what the uh, approach, I mean, how do we follow this statement is, wherever it's a null, that means there is no value present. In future, there might be some value. In case of blank, it is purely blank. Blank is a declared condition. Null is not a declared condition. Blank is purely a declared condition. So if I mention something called as null, let's mention something called as null. Let me copy this. I'll use this insert statement again with some ID five. Um, I'll mention state as null. I'm trying to insert. So even this got inserted. If I go here and try to use a select statement. See, I haven't declared anything. I mean, only thing is I have mentioned it as null. Null, it is taking it as a value. It is not taking it as a condition here in SQL. So wherever nulls are automatically coming, that means there is some value which is missing here. In case of blank, there is no value missing. You have clearly mentioned it as blank. That is the reason that value is indicating it as blank. You cannot declare nulls here. Nulls will automatically come. That means you have skipped that value. In future, you might mention some values here in case of null. Hmm. Understood or somewhere you are again stuck? Hmm. Right, okay. Again, little more confusion here uh, regarding on null and blank. Okay. Uh, as you That's said, that null will be in a feature we can make a modify or in some extent in this, right? Mm -hmm. But whereas in a blank, uh, it will be a blank, but we cannot change it, right? But yes. uh, right now, uh, we see in a query, I think you also mentioned like update or something you've done, but pay that particular Kerala, uh, right? The state name or hmm. got hmm. added. So here it is not confusion. Okay. Now the thing is, if we are if you are using the update statement, you can update any specific null or blank also. Even that is possible. But in SQL, how the SQL works is wherever you are mentioning. See, you have clearly mentioned a blank here. That is the reason it is taking it as blank. But if you go back and see here, you have you haven't mentioned anything in ID. You haven't mentioned anything in ID here. In case of insert statement. We are only inserting these three conditions. You are not inserting ID. So that is the reason it is getting it as null. If you go again and insert any specific ID here, it will be updated. I mean, that ID would be updated to the whatever value you are trying to mention. In case of here, I'm not using any update statement to mention this one, two, three, these IDs. I'm not using any update statement. It can be inserted in future with the insert statement also directly. Even that is possible. How, how, how can I do that? Insert into. Now, have a watch. This will clarify your doubt. ID. See, if you see here, I have only mentioned ID. I haven't mentioned state name. I haven't mentioned capital. I haven't mentioned language. Whereas, in case if I'm trying to insert wherever there is a blank, I guess there is no blank. Let me go back and insert a blank condition. I'm trying to mention a blank here. I'm trying to insert a blank here. Incorrect integer value for column ID. I cannot mention blank. Probably I have to mention something here as eight. 
here I can mention it as black. Now, this is one drawback of MySQL. This is not common in all the SQLs. If I mention this, see here I've clearly declared that there is no value present for state. Whereas in the, this condition, I have mentioned only ID, which I want to declare all three columns. I do not want to insert in future. I might come up and insert that values. Now, if I see this in future, I might come up and insert state name, insert capital, insert language where ID is equal to six. I can do that way, but in future, I cannot come back and here, I mean, I cannot come back here and see here. I've clearly mentioned it as blank while inserting itself. I've clearly mentioned it as blank. I have declared something here. I'm not declaring anything. In case of null, wherever nulls are coming, I'm not declaring anything. In case of blank, I'm clearly declaring that there is no value present. Clearly it is a blank. So that is the reason blank will not never reflect it as null. And the standard approach is you cannot update it in future also. You cannot update it in future. Even though there is a probability, there is an option to update it. But in SQL, you cannot update it. This is how the SQL conditions. I mean, there are few terms and conditions. If at all it's a blank, it's a pure blank. Even though that can be updated, but you have declared it as blank. That means you have declared something. But in case of null, you are not declaring anything. After six, you are not declaring anything. In future, you might come up and declare few uh, entities here. There is a possibility. Hmm. Yeah, go ahead. So, you didn't understood actually, we can write the update statements in both the cases, right? Like we can update the uh, India state set uh, uh, ID equal to uh, uh, some uh, 10 yes. or something where uh, the state, update state is, state is, update is yes, update is nothing but you are trying to update the existing condition. Either in you can both update. both the cases we can update, right? Even yes, in the blank yes. and even in the null case, both the cases we can update. Yep, yep. In case of blank also you can update, in case of null also you can update. But the standard rule here in SQL is whenever it is null, it can change anything. I mean, there is no value declared. Why null is indicating here it is? There is no value declared. In future you might come up and insert some value. But here there is no value declared. That means you have declared it as blank. Yeah, See, while, here update, by while writing the update statements, we can give our user different value. I mean, uh, like whatever the value we can, we need to update, we can update as, as it is right. So mm -hmm. we can set the state name equal to our own name, right? Like uh, what is the difference like in case of null and uh, blank? Uh, so that is what I'm trying to explain. Wherever it is mentioned it as null, that means you haven't declared anything. See, in case of eight, you have declared it as null. You have declared it as blank. Sorry, you have declared it as blank. Clearly, it is visible. You have declared it as blank. There is no state name. There is no state name. You have clearly mentioned it as blank. Here, you haven't mentioned anything. For these three conditions, you haven't mentioned anything. Even for this condition, even for this condition. You haven't mentioned anything. Whereas for this condition at the last, you have clearly mentioned it as blank. You have manually mentioning it as blank. There is no state name. Okay, you inserted one uh, uh, new value, new ID, right? Six. Hmm. So after inserting new ID, it has again taken one more uh, row. That's it. So it doesn't no, insert no. in the existing row, right? Uh, so I have see, I have inserted a new value with eight where I have mentioned blank. I'm not mentioning any blank here. I'm not mentioning any blank here. See. Okay. Do not get confused. That's how the SQL works. Wherever it is reflecting it as null, that means in future there might be some updates. Every null can be value. Now, there might be some updates or there cannot be some updates. But how null works is, see here in case of null, this null can be two. Uh, let's take the below statement. Hmm. This null can be two also. This null can be five also. This null can be six also. This null can be seven also. This null can be eight also. Whatever value you are trying to declare, this can be null can be any value because null is not declared. As of now, it is not declared. Even 
for this null, it can be nine, it can be seven, it can be four, it can be five, it can be two, any value it can come, it can take any value. But in case of null, you haven't declared. That means you haven't considered any value here up till now. That is the reason even this is unique. That is the reason even this is unique. Whereas in case of blank, you have clearly mentioned it as blank. Blank means nothing. Nothing is there. Nothing is there. There is a white space. Nothing is there. So blank means you have you are trying to declare something. Null, that means in future you can I mean, not consider it as in future also. Null can be any value. Okay. Blank is purely blank. Now that's how the behavior of blank and null in SQL is. And this is common for all the SQLs, not with respect to MySQL, with respect to SQL Server also, yeah. with respect to the other SQL uh, and the environments, even PL SQL, even Postgres SQL. In that case, is also blank and null. This is how it behaves. Let now let's go back. Now somewhere we might have mentioned spelling wrong. What was that language? Now yesterday we haven't seen one condition here. In case of data definition language, one condition is missing and which we haven't seen, alter statement. Alter. See, alter statement is a data definition language. So what do you want to alter? Alter table, table name. This is what I want to alter. Now existing column, see in case of alter, I can add a new column. There's an option to call, uh, there is an option to mention add, what you want to add? I want to add a new column. Now I can directly mention add uh, maybe language is there, state is there, region. I want to add this column, add region. Now what is the data type? Region is a variable character and let's clear it as 50. See, I'm trying to add a new column which is region to the existing table. Now, if I use this, a new column is added. Now, alter statement can be used to add a new column. You can use this alter statement again to drop an existing column also. Now, alter table, table name, drop. I want to drop this region which I have inserted. And while dropping, it is not recommended to mention any data type. Simply mention the column name. That's it. The region column is dropped. Now, I want to modify anything. I want to update certain conditions here. Name of the column I want to modify. The somewhere the language spelling is wrong. I want to mention it as correctly. Now, in case add drop is straightforward, but here if I want to update something, it is slightly different you have to use a modify condition. Now, even modify is a uh, data definition language. Enter table, test table name. You have to mention what you want to alter. You want to alter table? Yes, you can alter that. Now, you want to rename a column. There is an option called as the rename. Rename, what is the column name? This is the existing column name. This is the existing old column name. I want to update it to new column. What do you want to rename? Rename column. I'm trying to rename a column to this. This is a keyword. Even two is a keyword. Now that's it. You want to rename. And if you are renaming it, if I come down, the spelling gets updated. I'm trying to rename something, you can rename it. Now, this query is for MS SQL. In case of SQL Server, 
this is slightly different. Alter table, this table name. Now here it will come as alter column. I'm trying to alter a column, alter column, whatever column name it is, this column to, I keep it to language. Now this is slightly different. This will not run here. In MS SQL, it is not supported, but in case of SQL Server or in case of Oracle SQL, this is how it works. In case of MS SQL, rename is the only condition. You can rename that existing column. You can add a column. You can drop a column. Now, the thing is, you want to update a data type. The data type is different. I want to update it to some other data type. In that case, you can use a modify condition. What you want to modify? You want to modify column including data type. Alter table. Now here for capital, it is variable character. Modify column, capital. I'm trying to change it to character. It's a var care, I'm trying to change it to character. I doubt this will work because MS SQL has few. This is working here. See what I've done. Existing column capital is a variable character. I have updated it to character. So if you want to update, change any data type, you can use this modify. Modify existing column, whatever column name you are mentioned, to which data type you want to modify. This alter statement is similar like rename. This is similar like rename. Even this will work if I remove. Alter column state name. Character. Let's see if this is working. Column, column name I've mentioned, but this is giving me some errors. This is not supported. Both the alter conditions are not supported here. Uh, sorry to interrupt, sir, Riti. Uh, alter hmm. column in the sense like it's going to swapping this column or what? No, alter means you are changing the structure of a table. Update means you are changing the structure, you are changing the structure of a values present in a table. So if I go back, see, alter is a DDL command. You are changing the structure, you are changing the definition of that, I mean, the exact table which you have declared. Whereas update, update is with respect to individual values which are present in that table. If I go back here, I am trying to update a value. Here, if I see, if you see here, where is the update? Yeah. Update, I'm trying to update a value which is already present in the table, but alter will work. I'm trying to change the structure of a table. In that case, alter will work. Either you can, you want to add a new column rather than creating, deleting all the tables, deleting complete table and recreating it again. Why don't you add a new column here directly? I'm trying to add a new column. Mention this, add a new column, a new column would be added. And wherever you feel, Value should be inserted. You can insert that. Right. This one. See, everything is null. That means there is a possibility you can come down and insert a value. You can come down and insert a value. Very quickly. Got it. Now, alter we have covered. Let's see data control language, grant and revoke permissions. See, in case of grant and revoke permissions, we need to add a 
users here. But prior jumping to that, let's cover one more data type today. We might have, I mean, I might have explained you about character and variable character. In case of integer data type also, there are multiple data types available. Now, what all that data types are? See, this is the integer data type conditions. There is tiny int, there is small int, there is medium int, there is int, and there is big int. So there are five different data types for any numerical condition that to which specific to integer. In case, there are also decimal conditions also. Even decimal is there, even float is there, even double is there. Now, we will discuss this decimal conditions tomorrow, but today, let's first understand integer has five different data types. And if I go back, if I go back to the insert statement here, See, while declaring a column with integer data type, I haven't mentioned any size of the data type. So whenever you are declaring integer, this is the maximum size it can take. Storage is four bytes. It can store up to four bytes. Bytes is the background information. Do not go with bytes. Four bytes means not four characters. Bytes is a storage unit. It is not, not a character space unit. So it can store four bytes of information. Neglect this if you are getting confused, but integer can store from this value minus 21474-83648 to plus 21474-83647. So this is the maximum amount of value you can store it in integer. If I go back here, ID, I'm taking ID as only one value here. 1, 4, 5, 2, 3, 6, 8. Why to use an integer here? Why? Because this integer is a very long. It is taking this much value here. It is simply waste of storage. Our values are maximum. It can go up to certain limit. I mean, in case of ID, either it can go up to 100, 200 or 1000. Now, if you can see here, tiny int. What is the maximum size it can take from minus 128 to plus 127? So even tiny int is not visible. Our IDs can go up to certain limit of 32768. Okay, this would be the best approach. So rather than using ID here, we can use, I mean, rather than using integer here, we can use small int. Why to waste so much of space? Integer takes this much long value, this much long value it takes. Why to use so much space? And while declaring any numerical value, while declaring any numerical data type, it is not recommended to mention the size of that data type. There is a possibility if I mention integer also, I can declare it as 10. Even this will take. But if, even if you declare 10, integer will not only take 10, it will take up to maximum size of integer. The maximum size of integer is this. Now, the condition is, where do we use these data types? In case of tiny int, what is the best? I'll give you a few hints. Age of an individual can be up to 100 or more, more than 100. It, it, it can go up to 120, 130, maximum of 120 or 130. So wherever you are coming across age as a column, you can always go with integer. Why? Because it can take up to minus from minus 128 to below 120. 27 plus 127. So age of an individual can be up to around 100. On an average, 90% of the times it's around 100. So age is the correct uh, column name where tiny int can be used. Tiny int data type can be used. In case of small int, where do we use this? See, wherever there is an organization of around 30,000 or 31,000 individuals, an ID can go up to 31,000, not more than that. So there you can declare this small int. Now here in this case also, in case of our ID also, there can be more than 100. Uh, in India, there are not more than 100 states. In that case, small int, tiny int is the correct approach because there are around 29 states and six union territories, six or seven union territories. So it would be around 35, 36, 36 in total. So why to declare small int also always go with tiny int. 
Now, wherever the value is up to 32,767, you can declare small. Now, in case you are declaring a mobile number, in case you are declaring a mobile number, what is the correct data type? See, integer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Integer can take 10 values, but it is always ending at 21474836475647. Let's do that. Let me head over here. Let me create a table. Have created a table for practicing. Now, in case of mobile number, I I mean, integer can take 10 digits, but if you, if I declare integer here, let's try, I'll create this table. Table is created and let me insert few values. Mobile number nowadays it is also starting with six. It hasn't reached up to five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm mentioning certain mobile number. These are ten digits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm. These are ten digits. And I'll mention it as a semicolon. See, this will always throw an error. Out of range for column mobile number. This mobile number is out of range. Even though it has only 10 digits, integer can take 10 digits. But maximum value can, I mean, any integer can take is 2147483647. Let me copy this value itself. Let me paste it here. So this is working. Number of digits are same. The count of digits are same. But Maximum, it can take up to 21474-83647. If at all it's a 648 also, it will not even take this. It will throw an error. Why? Because it is out of range. So if you want to declare a mobile number, the correct one is big int. Alter table. Students info, modify column, I want to modify mobile number and I want to change it to big it, big underscore it or maybe big directly it. I close this, this is updated, this can take this value also, why because this is acceptable. Even it can take any mobile number. This is 10 digit mobile number. Even it can take a mobile number here. Let me see, select statement. See, if at all it was int, it can take up to this value, the first condition, 21474-83647. If at all it is going beyond 1647 also, that means only 648, only one plus one value, this integer will not take. You have to use a big int. Only in that case, it can take a value. But ideally, mobile numbers are not starting with two. Anywhere in the world, it's not starting with two up till now. Around six, it can start with. So... In case if you're using a mobile number, always go with big int as a data type. Do not mention integer. Integer will never take 
any value beyond this limit. Now it is up to us, where do we use this correct data type? Tiny int age is the correct one. Small int, an organization with around 30, 30 31,000 individuals or even 32,000 individuals, wherever organization is somewhere around 1 lakh people, always go with medium int plus 1 lakh more than 1 lakh individuals, always go with medium int. It can take up to 83 lakhs, 88,607 values. And wherever it's a mobile number, always go with big int. Now, any questions on this integer data type? Where do we use this data type? What is the right approach? And do not blindly create a column with integer as a data type. If you think your IDs can be up to 100 only, go with tiny, go with small int. Do not come and randomly create any column with any data type. See, integer, even though you mention it as 10, it will still take up to 21, that whatever value, 21474863647. So it is not recommended to mention size of a data type in case of integer. If you only mention that data type, that's it. The maximum size it can take up to, it is up to the value which is present. For integer, it can take up to this value. For medium mint, it can take up to this value. Sir, what will be the uh, hmm. data type for sales? For sales. Okay, now if you think, now what is what is this value? What is this value? Let me come down. What is this value? 100, 1000, lakhs, crores. This is 214 crores. This is 214 crores, 74 lakhs, 83,647. If you think your sales is beyond this limit, you can go with big int. Big int is somewhere two to the size of 63 minus one. This is much more bigger, much more bigger. Now it is up to us. Your sales are around 83 lakhs, go with medium int. If at all, it's going beyond 83 lakhs. In crores, it is going. It can take up, you can take up to integer. It can take up to 214 crores. So if at all, it's a sales, go with int. The correct one is int. If at all, it's a number of employees, number of transactions. Usually people uh, or any banking system will not, I mean, do not track crores of transactions. It can track up to lakhs. I'm not talking about sales. I'm talking about number of transactions. So a bank can take up to, usually whatever a bank does is it will not uh, keep all the historical transactions data with them. It, it will only keep last one year or two years. Previous to that, all that uh, information would be dumped somewhere. So last one or two years, maybe it can take up to 83 lakhs around less than 83 lakhs also. In that case, go with medium it. Wherever it is related to number of employees, number of transactions, there is a certain limit there. You can go with small int or medium int. In case of sales, integer is the correct one. If at all it is going beyond 214 crores, go with big int. And big int is correctly used for mobile numbers. Wherever you come across a mobile number, always go with big int. Now, in case of sales also, sales is not always a pure integer value. It can be a decimal value also. Some 1 crore 0 0.00, 0 0.01, 0 0.35. There can be point also. In that case, if you are using a pointer, you should use a decimal there. We will discuss how a decimal will work. Uh, maybe in tomorrow's session, I'll definitely explain. But for now, only understand how an integer data type can be used. And what is the right data type? Where can we use that data type? Now, any questions on this?
Nor. Okay. If there are no questions, let's go back. Let's go back and yes. see. Instead of mod, instead of modifying, for example, can we mm -hmm. go back to the statement and uh, change there itself? For example, uh, wherever we written the first statement, can we change there itself? For example, if for example, I want to add a new column. Instead of mm -hmm. adding adding a new column, can we go to the first statement and add the column there? Like just uh, putting a here, comma and then. You're trying to say comma here and yes. the student name, you want to add an address here. This is what yes. you're trying to say, right? Yes, 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 yes. Very good. Question is valid. See, there is already a table with this name. If I again create this, table students info already exists. You have to drop this table and recreate that. Now, in that case, yes, there is a possibility. You can always drop that. Drop table. There is one statement. If drop table, table name, if exists. This into this. You can drop this table. See what is this? If is an operator, if is a conditional operator, exist is also an operator. If at all there is a table with student info, it will drop that table and you can recreate this specific table. You can run this complete statement in one single go also. You can run this complete statement in one single go. In the first condition, it will drop and in the second condition, it will create. Even this is possible. But why to recreate a table? Why don't you alter it? Because if you drop this, you have, you have to again insert the statements again. You have to come down and again reinsert the statements. Your question is valid, but there is already a table present. Either you have to drop that table and again recreate the structure with the latest column which you have added. Okay. Now, let me go back. Clauses we have discussed, where and add. There are operators. There is if operator. There is exist operator. If condition we have seen, there are few more conditions of if. In future, we would be seeing. If is nothing but if at all, there is certain value. Only then if exist. That means if there is some table with this name, drop that table. This is what the statement is trying to convey. Drop table if exist this table name. If at all there is a table name with this name, it will drop that. So SQL is your English language. Whatever statements you're writing, it has to be with your with respect to your English grammar. See, I, I was first writing if exist after thing. I mean after this. Drop table, table name, if exist. This, this is giving me an error itself. Here you can see, this is giving me an error itself somewhere it is, if is not a valid at this position. This is not valid at this position. So if exist will always come drop table if exist. First I'm trying to check if the table exists or not. You cannot mention the table name first. Now let's do the DCA here. Grant and revoke access. See, assume that I want to grant access to certain individual. Now, how do I want to grant access? I want to grant read access. I want to grant update access, delete access. I only want read access. Read access means select. If you're selecting something, that means you're reading something. So I only want to give grant select on, on which condition you want to give on a specific table. I want to give on this India state table, select permission to which individual you want to give. 
I want to give it to certain individual. Maybe I'm trying, I want to give it to Rakesh. Grant select on So this is how a grant access is given. Now, there is no user called as Rakesh here, which is added, but still I have given grant select access for this table to this individual. Now you want to revoke an access. It's almost similar. Revoke. What you want to revoke? The, in case of revoke, you want to revoke select on which specific entity on this entity. That's it. Now here, again, your English concept will come. I want to revoke select access on this specific table. You cannot mention it as Rakesh here. You cannot mention it as two. Two is not a valid condition. Two is only valid when you want to give something. I want to give you something. If you want to take something, I want to take from. From is the correct condition here. I want to take something from. I want to take something. I want to give something to you. To you, from you. So I want to revoke something. From is the correct keyword here. Now, select access is there, insert access is there, update access is there. There are multiple accesses. It is up to us what access you want to give. You can give that specific access. You want to give all the accesses together. Now, let's assume grant. And in our MySQL, this individual is not present. If you add this individual and whenever that individual is trying to log in, he will always have select access on this specific table. Now I want to give grant select comma update comma delete. I want to give all these accesses on this table to which individual. I can mention that individual name. Maybe I'll mention my name, even though I am added here as a user, uh, sorry, root user, not as a Ritish. While installing this MySQL, I'm added as a root user, which is admin. So I want to give grant, select, update, delete on this specific table to Ritish. This will work. Now, rather than writing all this, this will give you a better clarification. Select, update, delete. This will give you a better clarification. Now, if I want to give access to grant, I can mention it as also all. All means all three conditions will come. Even insert will also become. You can insert the conditions also. Grant all on. Everything remains same. That's it. You can give this way also. Now, you want to revoke access? Revoke. Revoke all on which specific entity? This, here you have to mention from. You're taking it from Ritesh. You're not giving it, you're taking it from Ritesh. Now what is wrong here? Let's see. See, still it is reflecting it as wrong something, but it has run. So sometimes it behaves weird. From is not a valid at this position ending here. What is it? Okay, anyways, it is working now. Now, this is with respect to DML. Insert, update, select. This is all with respect to certain entities which are present. You want to grant access to database. You can also grant access to database. Ours is not installed as a purely uh, a cloud-based server. That is the reason you cannot do that. Grant um, create on the database you have to mention.
now the statement is correct even this will run what i'm trying to give i'm trying to give create access on this database ritesh database to this individual earlier this was for dml select was dql update was dml delete was dml even insert was dml but if you want to give access to if you mention all also this is table here if you mention database it will give grant or revoke access to that database even that is possible now this is how grant and revoke access will work and if you are working as a database analyst uh, sorry if you are working as a data analyst not database analyst if you are working as a bi engineer or a data analyst this grant and revoke is of not much use because we are not the admin people to grant and revoke any accesses it is the architect role it is the lead role or it is the admin's role to grant and revoke access so if you only know the concepts what is grant and revoke more than enough any questions on this grant and revoke yeah ritesh if we need to uh, grant access to number of people so we need to mention all those names a group uh, of people see in my sequel that is one drawback you have to mention it individually let's try it. as you said let's try it with different names it is accepted you can mention n number of names with the comma here you can mention n number of names okay thank you any more questions hello uh, hey sir yeah go ahead no uh, ritesh uh, just wanted to know like if there is a like 100 employees in a company so we have to make the mention the each and every person's name or is there any other way like because it will be very time consuming like if there are many employees in a organization yep yeah. there is a possibility you can use a insert statement only once and you can mention uh, the names separately i i'll show you okay you can do that way and mm -hmm. how it works is insert and do uh, whatever table we are using values now here with multiple insert also you can do um, if i explain it maybe you will get confused i have to explain with a certain example um, let me let me think how can i explain it because if i explain it that way it would be confusing you can use a insert this way this condition what it is not matching column count doesn't match in the row one row one certain to oh, values is not required hmm. interesting it here states you have picked it i guess while uh, explaining alter you might have removed any column No, no. I have removed. Everything looks good. Let me see if there is a mismatch of that. This is with students info. Where is the India info? Hmm. Region is there. It is what it is. Very much. Let's see. Let's see. Drop the region. Let me come down. Now this will work. See, I'm not writing multiple insert statements within a single insert statement only. You can write this way. 
in curly braces or in open and close parenthesis, you can mention n number of values. Whatever values you want to mention, okay. you can mention. And this is very uh, a basic approach. Uh, I mean, very low kind of uh, programming. But in terms, if you want to insert a bulk set of records, I'll explain in the, uh, in a different session. Maybe we can use our Excel uh, probability also there with the help of our Excel sheet. Assume that you have an have an Excel sheet of one lakh records. How do we use that insert? Uh, I'll definitely explain that. Hmm. Any any more questions? Thanks, Sutish. Thanks. Uh, hi, Ritesh. Hey. Uh, actually, uh, I had a, a doubt from yesterday's session. Uh, okay. Can I ask? Yeah, yeah, please go. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, trying out the queries that uh, you taught yesterday and while updating uh, I got a, a one, 1175 error uh, it says that you are using safe mode and you tried to update a table without a where that uses a key okay if you are using a update statement use this okay yeah, yeah. Uh, I use that so mm -hmm. other than the uh, beside this approach is there anything else sir there are two approaches there are two conditions default any sql doesn't support update you have to keep okay. it to zero if at all you want to again keep it back to one that means no updates would be done you can keep it to one if you keep it to zero that means it is zero you can update it this is one statement and in sql usually we follow the statement only if you are working on any specific tool, uh, in tools also, there is an option available. Let me see where is that option available. View, preferences, um, SQL case sensitive, somewhere here, the options are there. Uh, change to uppercase, administration, modeling. No, basically, again, here you are trying to uh, remove that safe mode. Only, yep, right? yep, yep. Yes. So other than this, uh, there is no. By default, safe mode is there. If you want to update anything, then we need to remove that safe mode safe and mode. then update. Yep. We that's need to remove way. that safe mode. Yes, that's the only way. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. This is via any tool uh, settings. And if you want to use it by query, use this. And then always go with query. Because settings is somewhere difficult to find also. Okay, okay, Ritesh, thank you. Okay, the second one. Okay, anyways, let me see if there is a possible preferences only here only, you will get some option. Update. Show schema, show columns, default, SQL execution. Somewhere only, somewhere here only, you'll get some option. Uh, that. Comment type to use shortcut. Hmm. Any any other questions? Now, today it's a fourth session. Tomorrow, probably it would be the last free session for SQL. Um, one who are good with my explanation. Um, if you have any, um, any, any updates also, now updates in the sense, any suggestions also, as I've said, uh, I might have asked yesterday as well. If I'm going a bit fast, I'm not going a bit fast. What to my understanding, it's okay. Because we want to cover everything in one month. So probably the speed at which I'm going is kind of okay. Now, one thing, keep it in mind, if you're learning SQL on that very specific day, go back and try to use, try to query. Unless you query anything, SQL is not that easy to learn. If you query it, you come across multiple errors. You yourself solve it. 
very easy language. And as I've said, it's a pure English language. Where to use from, where to use it, where to use if, your grammar, your statements, English statements, where to use what. If you are good in that, SQL is easy to understand. So try to practice what I'm trying to teach you know, every day, what I'm trying to explain on every day, more than anything. So if uh, there are no questions, 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 questions. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah, Rath, yeah Rath, please, please repeat your question. I guess I'm missing something. Uh, there is a gap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure under few people will be a not from this language background. Like they are from different uh, background and all. Uh, just okay. uh, uh, need help here. So few basic things are required for SQL. For example, like things or so data type. What is data type? What is thing? Like that. Little bit okay. more information is required. Okay. Now, no, good. You have asked a question. See, um, the thing is, um, see if you are writing your name. Assume that you are writing your own name. Um, if someone has asked your name, you do not write your name in terms of any numerical values, right? You, you try to write it in terms of uh, your character string values. So similarly, in SQL also, if you are declaring something, what do you declare? We declare a table. Apart from table, there are many other entities. We declare a view, we declare a stored procedure. There are many other entities. We are here to cover that. But let's assume you are trying to declare something where you want to store something. Store means you are declaring a table. Now, in table, there are columns. Column means whatever names you want to mention, that column names, and how many values you want to declare. So, values are your DML and columns are your DDL. Rows are your DML because you are inserting rows in with the help of insert statement. And you are declaring columns in the data definition language. Now, while declaring a column, if I mention name, how do you mention a name? Name should be in a string condition only. So whenever you are declaring any table, do not mention, I mean, you have to declare that data type. Data type is nothing but how do you want to write that name? You want to write it in numeric. You want to write it in string. You want to write it in decimal. You want to write which specific condition you want to write. It. So there are a few data types and there are multiple data types. N number of data types are available, which is a bit complex and not, not even our piece of cake. From a data analyst point of perspective, understood what do you mean by care and bar care, understand what do you mean by integer data types, understand what do you mean by date time data types, and understand what do you mean by the decimal float and few other data types. More than enough. So if you want to write your name, you write it in string condition. You you will need not, I mean you will not write as some numerical values. One, five, six, seven. You will not write this way. You will either write R A T A N your own name. So what do you mean by RATN? RATN is a string condition. So SQL doesn't understand that. How do you want to define that name? Either you want to define it as string. If you want to define it as string, you need to mention variable character or you need to mention character. So it is must whenever you declare a specific column, you have to mention the data type of it. Data type means how do you want to write it? You want to write it as a string. You want to write it as a numeric. You want to write it as a date time, which condition you want to write. So you have to declare that data type. And for every data type, there is a size. There is a maximum size. If at all, there won't be any size. There would be a very big drawback in SQL. Why? Because you can declare one lakh characters also. Even that is possible. But why to declare one lakh characters? It will be simply waste of storage, simply waste of space. So whenever you are writing a data type, there should be always a data type size. In case of numerical data types, if I go back to integer, these data types have a maximum size of 127. So it will not go beyond 127. So it is not recommended to mention any size here. With the name of the data type itself, it will take the maximum size. In case of variable and character, it is always recommended to declare a size. If you do not declare, it will take up to 255 for character. If you do not declare for variable character, it can take up to 65,535. If you do not declare variable character also, even this is possible. I can remove this variable character, this condition. 
this is possible but the thing is sql is forcing you to declare here it is forcing you why to go with 65000 even though variable character can occupy only certain set of spaces white spaces would be neglected but why to declare all that 65000 in case of variable character it can take up to 65535 which is not recommended always go with a certain set of size if you are not sure what would be the maximum size declare the maximum size if you are not sure declare 500 it can take up to 500 characters more than enough and wherever the number of characters are less than 500 assume that there are only five characters other 495 characters would be neglected why because it variable character removes the white spaces so if you are declaring something what should be the data type you are writing your name your name is in string value you are writing your roll number it's an integer value you are writing your mobile number it's an integer value. it's a big int value you are writing your age it's a small int value because your age on an average it is less than 100 or even yeah okay thanks now any random question if you if you are still getting confused anyone i'm not only talking about ratan even with any specific individual who still have a confusion why to declare data type why to write the size of the data type there are few sets rules and regulations in sql you have to follow that rules in case of blank and null also i'll explain one thing if you go back you are driving on the road whenever a red signal comes why to stop on red signal only has anyone come across this question why to stop on red signal why not stop on green and why not go on red that is how the rules are defined in case of sql same condition goes there are few set of rules and regulations blank means you are mentioning it as blank null means you haven't mentioned anything you can update both blank and null there is a possibility but blank means you have already declared it as blank so there are certain rules and regulations there is no why question to in sql there is no why question why is to stop on red signal only why cannot we stop on orange why cannot we stop on green so there are few defined rules you have to follow that rules that is how it works now sindu can the name of a database repeated yesterday when i'm using the same database name uh, no database name cannot be repeated it has to be unique because in the once in the same server you are trying to create the same database accepted if it would have been a different server we only have one server installed in our system if you have multiple servers you can create the same name in a different server same table name same database name within the same server it is not recommended same table name in a different database recommended but same table name in the same database not recommended it will always throw an error thank you everyone have a very good day